hot day and uh, some of you guys are having a problem with your AC and I've had many problems with my AC on my car because I have two of these and these Jettas um, even when the AC is working properly um, if you're new to getting one and you're wondering why the AC doesn't work that great they just don't just so you know that um, they don't work really good but they shouldn't be warm or hot coming out of anywhere so I'm gonna go over some of the things um, that I've had to do on mine and I'm gonna kind of explain to you guys the backyard method diagnosis um, to fixing these to accurately diagnose this car and if you want the perfect fix every time you're gonna have to have years and years of uh, knowledge you're gonna need a computer uh, computer uh, setup with a, either a VAGCOM or a Rostec and you're also gonna have to have a lot, of, a lot of knowledge and you're still gonna be doing some guessing just so you know that um, but uh, there are some common problems with these cars and uh, there's a lot of them so I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through each one of them I've got them all written down right here and I'm gonna go over this real quick in not in the heat and then I'm gonna go and show you each piece individually where to look so if you're new to Volkswagen and you're a bit fed up, fed up with the uh, complication of the AC system or you don't know that much about it um, prepare to be enlightened that it is very different um, they took a easy simple thing and made it very difficult to uh, work on and uh, you know it, that's typical of Volkswagen they they really like to over engineer stuff so I'm gonna walk you guys through some of the common problems and what typically the symptoms are of those problems um, with the AC system in the 2006 or later Volkswagen Jetta typically TDI so the first one is the AC compressor so when the AC compressor goes bad typically what's happening in my experience with my cars both of them um, the uh, AC will when you first turn it on in the morning time especially it will be intermittent so you'll turn it on and it doesn't work for a period of time and then all of a sudden it starts to work and then sometimes when you're driving all of a sudden it just shuts off and you have hot air then there's nothing working and then all of a sudden it turns back on um, usually there's a small valve in the side of the compressor which is the next item uh, that actually starts to stick or starts to go bad and sometimes um, you are successful in just replacing the valve but most of the time you end up replacing the whole compressor because of this issue so you know like i said to accurately diagnose this you would need uh, everything on the volkswagen runs through the computer would not, that was pretty nice of them to do that and uh, make it so complicated but uh, to really accurately diagnose that you would need to be able to you know diagnose the computer system by using software like a, such as VAGCOM or there's one aftermarket called Rostec which I would highly recommend having just for some of the other problems that you might have with your car so so if you do buy a new compressor they have them available on eBay fairly inexpensive only buy the Sanden brand do not buy one of the other Chinese brands they're destined to fail if you're going to try replacing the the valve on the side of the compressor which how the system works is your typical AC has a clutch and the clutch turns on and off and that uh, variate variates as to uh, creating the proper uh, pressure in your system um, they do not have that with Volkswagen they actually have a valve in the side of the compressor the co compressor is constantly running all the time and whether you're using the AC or not and um, 
what the valve does is it regulates how much freon to put through into the pressurizing of the system to give you the, your cold air system in a short term so this little valve goes out and causes havoc in fact it's very difficult to diagnose because you might even show uh, static pressures in your system that seem consistent with it being cold but it won't be so the easiest thing for me has been just to replace the compressor and yes it is an expensive guess but it's a lot cheaper than going to the dealer believe me they're like a thousand dollars plus labor at the dealer so you're you're almost better off just shooting in the dark and doing it yourself and replacing it the other thing that goes bad is the AC fan assembly on the radiator what that does is usually what happens and I've had all of these same problems with my car so don't be surprised if you're having one of these or all of them the AC fan goes bad on the uh, underneath the hood and there's two fans underneath the hood I'll show you what they are so typically what happens is you'll turn on your AC and there's approximately a 10 to 30 percent second delay from when you turn on the AC to where the fans actually start to work because it has to go through the computer system and the computer decides when to turn the fans on and all that stuff so there's usually a little bit of a delay when these things turn on sometimes they turn on right away sometimes it's about 10 seconds or 30 seconds so anyway you have two fans you have one here and one here and I've actually had to replace both of them on, the, on, on this car this is an 06 I'm using this as an example so that um, the 09 is very similar but it's a lot tighter in here for me to be able to point a video camera in here so um, so what usually happens is you might even notice that it's spinning uh, when the AC is on, but it's not spinning very fast because usually what happens is the brushes start to get intermittent and they will, uh, it, it won't spin as fast as it needs to. And the, your, your symptoms are that when you're driving down the road, um, when you're on the freeway maybe, it's getting pretty cold. Uh, when you're in town, it or when you're stopped at idle it it it's not working very well at all and at all um or maybe even not working and uh sometimes every once in a while your temperature go, goes up but typically it won't because the tdi runs so efficient that um it almost will run without coolant uh, i didn't tell you that but you know i've actually ran mine out of coolant and it didn't even overheat But I did notice when I when my fans went out, um, I was driving up in the mountains, and when I was actually going up the mountain, uh, and I was pushing the car to the limit, I saw a bunch of cars on the side of the road, and it did start to get up to three quarters temperature. So it, it really takes a lot to get them to heat up. So anyway, <clears throat> that's your that's another problem with it. Another problem with the car is the blower motor inside. So if this, the symptoms of this are typically you turn on the fan. Um, sometimes you'll hear a little bit of noise after, and, and then the noise will stop because the blower motor is not working anymore and the blower doesn't work inside the car. There's no cold air or hot air or anything coming through your dash. Typically, that's the blower motor. But sometimes the actual power control module, there's a little thing under the driver's side under the dash that's called I believe it's called the power control module um, and that will go out and actually make it so that your blower motor won't work at all so every once in a while it's not the blower motor sometimes it's cheaper just to buy a blower motor put it in see if it works if it doesn't work then just figure it's the power control module and if it is the power control module it is a dealer item and it has to be uh, programmed once it's put in which you can use your Rostec, Rostec software to do if you're doing it yourself or you can pay the dealer their money to get it done and it's not cheap just so you know so the other things that go out on the car I've pretty much gone through the whole AC system because it's most of it's not very good so the other thing that goes out on the AC system is the blend door motor so um, and the symptoms of this are pretty common with even Fords do this 
um, is the AC will be turned on and the compressor will be actually putting out cold air. You can feel the tubes on the compressor on the uh, that go into the car and they're cold and you have hot air coming out of your vents. That's your blender motor. Um, they go out and usually they make a noise. It's kind of like a little bit of a shuddering noise when it goes out. Um, and and that's the blend door but more commonly is the recycle door motor so when you turn on your recycle vents um, it's it doesn't start sucking through the inside of the car you can hear the difference usually when you turn it on and you can hear the air sucking through the um, through the uh, under the passenger side and going into the system and then all of a sudden you feel your air getting colder um, that's usually that's a common problem they're located behind the uh, behind the glove box and there are several videos on replacing each of these items so I wasn't going to go through and show you how to do all these repairs but um, this way you can kind of you use your a little bit of knowledge and shoot in the dark a little bit and honestly <clears throat> you could probably replace most of these parts for less money than one trip to the dealer to have you know like the compressor replaced so anyway um just a little way so that um you know and honestly it, this ac system is terribly over engineered it's not a very good ac system it doesn't work very good it doesn't get very cold um, and they pretty much suck but you know having AC is much better than not having AC even when it's not working that great um, you know the AC that's in these cars is uh, barely adequate is what I want to say so it is better to have it working so and, and if for some reason your AC system completely does fail and your compressor locks up um, you will not uh, you, your fan belt will break it's because the way it's designed it doesn't you can't turn it off just so you know that so it is better to keep it maintained and working so anyway uh, I think I've covered just about everything on the AC system and uh, you know, good luck with it and I hope it works out for you and hope that you can get it fixed um, I've had several comments on things I'd made another video on this subject and I had several comments that um, I wasn't able to I had to you know to answer so I figured I better make one with more depth because there's a lot of viewers watching these because they you know it is a, the AC system sucks so anyway um, the other things the simple things are is make sure that you do have Freon in your system you don't have a leak and those are common things you know those are normal things that you would check with any car um, so that's the first thing you need to do of course I mean I'm just going over the stuff that actually goes wrong I'll talk to you in the next video please like share and subscribe